This video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. If you would like to become a patron, check out the link in the video description. Hello, hello, it is a beautiful day in February. I am not wearing glasses today because I'm getting some new ones, but they're not made yet, so you get to look at my naked face for a while. Okay. So one of my goals this year is to make more studio vlogs, but it's quickly becoming clear to me that I will never make them if I keep holding myself to these standards of like framing everything in a really cinematic way, setting up the camera on my tripod with my best lens, setting up my external microphone for good audio. It's all a whole bunch of work. Uh, and because of that, I haven't been vlogging, so I'm gonna try to keep it kind of light and casual this week. This week, I am extremely busy because not only do I have deadlines, but I am also getting my wisdom teeth taken out on Friday, which means I only have four days instead of five to work on things. I don't know if I've ever been on anesthesia in my entire life, so I have no idea what to expect, which is deeply terrifying, but I'll worry about that later. <laughs> For now, I am getting ready to go to the gym. I made a goal this year, not a resolution because I never keep those, but a goal to go to the gym four to five days a week every week as long as I am able and I'm actually sticking to that which is really exciting because I have noodle arms I am not very strong but I would like to be stronger so in the middle of my work day I stop what I'm doing and I go to the gym for an hour and it makes me feel better it is just about time to go so I'm gonna head over right now you got it come on you're on camera <laughs> Casper, did you step on my laptop? Did you turn on Apple Music? Casper, you know I don't have Apple Music. Don't want to be up there, huh? So just by Thursday, pretty much. Okay. Ish. <laughs> Another goal I have for this year is to relearn how to code. I took a class in college two years ago about how to use HTML and CSS to design websites, but since it's been so long and I haven't really used that skill, I no longer really remember how. So I have been taking online courses to refresh that skill, and hopefully by the end of this year I'll feel proficient enough to design websites for people. I honestly didn't expect to feel so limited not knowing how to code. I spent a long time looking at job listings for designers that required coding knowledge to get the position, and also knowing how to code of course creates the opportunity to make more money. So the way I'm pursuing this goal, along with my other goals, is breaking it up into tiny daily habits. Like I said earlier, I want to become stronger, so in order to achieve that goal, I've created a habit of exercising every day. And of course, I don't actually end up sticking to this every single day, but I do my best to hit as many of these habits as possible. So I have this section in my passion planner where I keep track of my habits, and every day that I do one, I check it off. And I really like this because not only does it give me a visual representation of what I've done this week, but it also helps keep me motivated. The four habits I have going right now are practicing Japanese on Duolingo, which I'm aware is not the most effective way to learn the language, but my goal here is to kind of like stay in contact with the language, exercising, eating at least one egg, and practicing coding. Today specifically though is exciting for two reasons. One, I get to pick up my glasses, and two, I am going to practice coding in a real place with real people. I discovered this local group called Toledo Web Professionals, and today they're putting on an event about making websites using a grid system, and I am very excited to learn something in an actual physical setting as opposed to just sitting alone in my room reading articles online. So we'll see how that goes. It'll either be mind-numbingly boring or really fun.
incredibly stressed today. It's like everything in the whole world is due at the same time. There is no hierarchy of priority. Everything is an emergency. I feel like I have an impossible amount of work to complete, but if I don't complete it, then I don't get paid and then I don't pay my bills. I just got home from the gym and that helped a lot, but my body is still made of stress. It'll be fine. Everything is gonna be fine. I'm just gonna try to get as much done as I possibly can by tomorrow. For better or for worse, once I get my teeth out, I will be off the grid and not responding to any work emails whatsoever. No one will be able to get a hold of me. And that sounds fantastic. <laughs> oh man. I just took a Valium pill. I have no idea when that'll kick in because I've never had Valium before, but I hope it's soon because I'm really anxious. Hey Molly. Yeah? How long does it take for Valium to kick in? When did you take it? Uh, like five to ten minutes ago. In the car probably? By the time we get there you're gonna be I'm shaking. I can see the screen going. <laughs> Val just told me that I'm excreting words, <laughs> which is a horrible description of Valium. Everything you're doing is very slow, mm -hmm. like sludgy but very calculated. <laughs> like you're taking a really long time to think about what you're doing. All right, we are here, so I will have to talk to you afterward, because they will super kick me out if I have my camera in there. <laughs> Morgan is done with surgery. Yay. Did very well, apparently. I was way more coherent than anyone expected mm -hmm. because I was having a very intense panic attack the whole time. <laughs> so I woke up still having a panic attack. Like, there was a lot of continuity mm -hmm. in that experience. Yeah, well, afterwards, you shook the doctor's hand and you shook the nurse's hand and you said thank you for all your hard work and then gave the nurse a hug. It was very cute. I was crying. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought too hard about how to start this segment. Um, teeth. <laughs> teeth. 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 My microphone is dead, so we just have to shout. We were not allowed to have my camera in the recovery room. I was hoping to have some antics for you, so we'll just have to talk about the experience. The antics were all crying. <laughs> yeah, I cried a lot. I have Molly here to help me fill in any blanks, because... <laughs> It's a little bit traumatizing. So what happened between me being high on Valium in the car and my mouth being stuffed full of gauze also in the car later? We brought you into the operating room. The nurse was ridiculously nice. She was really good. She was very chatty, very friendly. It was good to like relax the mood a little bit. Val and I had come along for like emotional support mm -hmm. there because Morgan was like needles, stuff like that. Yeah. And the doctor comes in and says, okay, you two leave. And then and I <laughs> Instantly start crying. <laughs> I did not previously know my ability to start crying on cue, but it was like instantaneous. Val managed to bargain with the doctor to let us stay long enough to have the IV put in Morgan's arm. Yeah. The laughing gas did not help. It did not work at all. I'm sitting there with like a mask on my face and they, they keep telling me you have to calm down or the gas won't work. We can't do this if you don't calm down. And I'm like, how did it calm down? I have like a death grip on Val's hand as they stick me with the needle and I'm like crying the whole time and it doesn't really feel like a needle so much as it feels like someone punched me in the arm. I was just like awkwardly holding your foot because... I remember that! Yeah, they were sticking good. an ivy in one arm and Val was holding the other hand and I was just like... I was doing very bad emotional support. No, I appreciated it. I appreciated it. Val and I go sit in the waiting room and do absolutely nothing. I yeah. feel like I lost time for about half an hour. Wait, let me fill in the blank okay. here in between. So I think I was sitting in the chair conscious for maybe like two whole minutes. After you guys leave, I'm staring into the middle distance and crying. And I said, can any of you like hold my hand? And they were like, no, we're kind of busy. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to calm down and nothing's happening and I'm like I'm supposed to pass out this nightmare is supposed to be over and I'm still awake why am I still awake and then I felt like um, I felt like I was taking kind of a small nap like you're not conscious but it's just kind of like 
kind of surface level. Yeah, you're like kind of aware of what's going on. Yeah, so like I didn't feel anyone up in my mouth or anything, but I just kind of was chilling for a span of about two to five minutes. And then the nurse tapped on my arm and was like, all right, time to go to the recovery room. And I instantly, as if no time had passed, was still panicking and I was <laughs> like, okay! The nurse comes to get Val and I and the specific wording that she used was like, okay, we just managed to calm them down. Let's try to keep it that way. Don't do anything to upset them. Like, try to keep her chill. You guys get in the room. I think I'm kind of calm. Like, I'm crying, but I'm like, okay. Yeah, you just looked upset. Yeah, and the first, after telling you, after giving you these instructions, the first thing the nurse says is, we couldn't save your teeth, and I instantly start sobbing full force again. Because I remember you asked for your teeth, like, four times. Yeah, I brought a special dice bag to put my teeth in so I can make puns about wisdom saving throws. <laughs> and the doctor ends up walking in maybe, like, a minute later, like, hey! surprised with the teeth and said, yeah, yeah we managed them. to get two of them. <laughs> and Morgan is like immediately satiated. I remember distinctly you were trying to talk through the gauze because you were stuffed up with gauze and yeah. you took the nurse's hand and you were like, thank you. You've done such a good job. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your hard work. I did. That's what I said. You did it to the doctor, too. I did. I don't remember when I said it to the doctor. Like, I remember thanking the doctor, but I don't know when that happened. It was, it was the first thing you tried to do and you stuck your hand out towards him as he kept talking. I, okay, I felt like an inconvenience to everyone around me and I wanted to apologize and make sure they knew that I appreciated them, which all of this stuff is stuff I would do. Like, on a normal day. I was just really upset. You also gave the nurse a hug after she walked you to I, the car. I asked, I was like, can I hug you? And she was like, sure. And I felt like very happy to hug her. She was very nice. She was super nice. And she had really pretty handwriting. According to Val, the nurse buckled me into the car. I was thinking about a lot of other things other than who specifically was buckling me in, but that's very cute. You also went home with like eight different pill bottles. Yeah, I, I have been taking these for three days. <laughs> I am very jealous, honestly. My wisdom tooth experience crash course. Xanax and laughing gas did not work. I fought the nurses. They only got the needle in while I was distracted. I was out and then came to a half an hour later sitting like this <laughs> with my teeth in my hands. I have no memory of anything that happened. Apparently my mom had to help me spell the word motherfucker. I took a picture of my teeth and tried to send it to my brother with the caption, I lived motherfucker, but I couldn't spell it. I had to get full stitches all the way around this way. I puffed up like a balloon. There's pictures somewhere. I'm sure you can add them in post. And Morgan is three days later completely fine. They gave me steroids. I think I was supposed to get narcotics, but I don't think legally they were allowed to give me narcotics the day of the surgery, so I just was on lots of Motrin and ibuprofen, and that's it. Well, have I forgotten anything? that you remember? There was a fun time for about like 20 minutes of you sitting on the couch eating an entire tub of yogurt. Oh yeah. It's, it's spilling down your front and Val keeps trying to clean it up and you just add more. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just sadly eating this yogurt. Uh. Your very first sip of water you tipped it back and then leaned forward and it all came spilling out in your lap. You were just very like sad but very kind to, to everyone. Well that's probably as good of an end as any to this video. Um, I'm kind of ready to move past it, or make an attempt to. Your sutures will dissolve and you'll forget it ever happened. I hope so. Except when I stare at my teeth in a jar. <laughs> like and subscribe if you like teeth! <laughs> um, I also have a Patreon if you would like to support teeth content. No, I make videos about uh, art and mental health and activism and that kind of realm of things. And then sometimes I talk about my my teeth. I am in a lot of them. You are. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> I feel like I need a video thumbnail and I don't know if it's gonna be from this. I'm being very careful of your teeth. Thank you.